Young people need an opportunity to talk and learn about what's happening to them in their own communities, in their own culture, in their own country. It creates an opportunity to share and talk to each other about the issues and social emotional wellbeing, stuff that comes up. Our young Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are creative, they are resilient, they are an asset. The more opportunities that we get together and you know, share our culture and share our stories um, as a community, the more that we're connected to place and who we are as people. Communities know their experience, they know their country, they know their culture, they know their law. If we take time and we actually listen, they can tell us better than we can tell them what the solutions are. And this project will draw that out. So this tour is going to be tricky, but we got it covered. We've got Coranda, Desert Island, Bowen and Palm. Today we're shipping out four pilots, two uh, sets of gear, and we should get all this gear in one piece, eh? Yeah. Hopefully. Well, before you guys came, there were some people having a fight. There was people not talking to each other. There was a lot of fighting going on and it went down to our children. And our school has to go down in lockdown. Yeah. When they was fighting, I thought like they would be alone and they'll get stressed out. It hurts because it was especially family fighting and family should not be fighting. Desert P Media broke some of those barriers down. We was all in the hall and that we made a yarning circle. So this, this project, what we're doing this week, is called Break It Down. Um, <laughs> this is all about you guys being the experts about all this stuff. We yarned about where we come from and where we live. My name Cody Okawara McCarthy from Innisfail Way, my mom. Any McCarthy's in the room? Any drums in the room? I could go on for ages and ages. <laughs> you were talking about how stress and bullying affects people. We all started talking up and getting in and getting involved and just being who we are. We're just brainstorming ideas and we all put our ideas down and majority rules. It is like encourage us students to do it. It felt great because I want to show them what I can really do. And it just frees your mind. It takes you away from all the stuff that's happening to you. There's been a huge issue with engagement at the school here. And the week after, even the kids were still going to school. We even had children that weren't enrolled at school going to school. Like afterwards, they just all got together, start yarning about what they was doing wrong. Everyone was like getting back together and there was no more fighting. It made them come together because they were singing with the, the people that they ate. How are we tonight? We Guri? Well, I just would like to welcome everyone to the DPM Roadshow. Thank you for being here tonight. And I hope you go away with something in your hearts and mind that we can all share. The Desert P Media crew, we've been roaming around all over far north Queensland over the last 12 months. And we're back here to show all the work that we created together. So give yourselves a round of applause, you're deadly. Alrighty. So you know what time it is, eh? Yeah. Put your hands together for the KDA crew. Coming up from that double guy country. Learn one simple lesson Harmony and our community Unity for you and me
But remember, this conversation is not over. This is your conversation. This is your story. Thank you for sharing and learning and creating all this deadly stuff together. It's really important to us and we're really grateful. So thank you for having us. That's a wrap. We had all the different services trying to help what was going on, but it, nothing was working. So this healing that's happened, it's come in a roundabout way that through the children with Desert P, they've been able to, you know, facilitate a healing starting and it still continue to this day. Yeah. Oh, makes me happy. I wanted to tell you about one of the participants uh, in the group. They were identified as having a lot of potential. And we met somebody really special to us. I met most of the crew from Desert P Meadow in June when they first arrived in Cranda. Siola. Just Desert P acknowledging the potential in that person and really swift, just boom, boom, boom do what they had to do to help that person. It feel really deadly, like, to me that's something that, you know, you, you helped create, you know. I was like a mentor, and I went to Palm Island and Thursday Island. And like, when we get shame, like Shaya, she always there to like, Hello. tell us something. Like I got to be a part of building up their confidence. I hope I achieved in some sort of way. She was my support throughout the video. And when she went, bro, we were heartbroken. No, I don't know, I felt like I was um, leading something, put myself out of my comfort zone. And, you know, that person's come back to community now you know, and just such a role model there. Yeah, yeah, and that's massive. Everyone's looking up to that person right now. And that person's aware of it, you know, big responsibility there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? <laughs> so we had a great show in Karanda. Today we're gonna drive this bus to Lucinda, to put it on the barge to go to Palm Island, and then we're going to Thursday Island. So that's show number two. Let's go. They, they're doing a great job what they're doing. It's just to go through the actual sources. Because this one, the one they came, that was a surprising, very surprising. And we knew it was on the horizons, but when they arrived in September, I wasn't aware they were here. It was uh, by pure coincidence that I just told my son to go to the park and see what was happening and if there's any activities happening there and see if he can be a part of. As me and myself and Prudy walk towards it, I see the big white board and they were turning it around and writing whatever they were supposed to be doing on that. But as soon as we got there, Wow, I can see a phrase just lit up. I learned something that when we were sitting there, we just jumbled up random words and we made it into a rap. Um, best bit putting words together. They were asking me if I can translate from English to language. I hope I done all right. He, he'd, he'd go to school in the morning telling us, I got this this afternoon, I gotta go straight away at three o'clock. He'd come home and, I'm gone, Dad, I've gotta, I've gotta go meet him at the bowls club. And he was just like, was all over Desert P Media, yeah. You are doing filming and you are doing interviews, but it's like you're hanging around your friends doing it. It was like what they're seeing in TV, but they're doing it in real life, you know? They're saying, yeah, we can do that too. 
the mainstream system is creeping into our communities and we really need to preserve our culture. A lot of media that we see, global media, it doesn't relate to their life on the island. But what Desert P is doing is they're using the same medium to reconnect with culture. And I think that's gonna be very effective. We were here a couple of months ago working with a group of young people from Kanemboga and Luki and um, Andrew Louie. So we all came together and spent two weeks um, writing music and, and creating a music video and also a series of short films all about sort of well-being and culture and connection. It's how we utilise that current flavour to get the message that we need across to the next generation, to the young. It has to pass on to them when it's their time. Tonight we're going to put on this roadshow here in Anzac Park and we're going to premiere, the world premiere of the new track Island Styles. Time waits for no one. So come on down, bring your kids. The whole community's invited. I'm really excited for the song to come out. Always was waiting for it. So every day I would just search up the website, see if it was uploaded. But when we saw the intro, we were like, we will save it, like it, we will repost it, we will repost it, like it, share it. I love the info. I'm looking forward to see what Desert P um, will be um, performing tonight. And this is the moment for tonight. I can't wait. How you going, all right? You had some kai kai there, what? Kapa Kubil, um, everybody. And um, I want to take this opportunity to ask all um, brother Yatobi and Warren for giving me the opportunity to be here today for Welcome All Families on Country, but also excited to see um, the video of them playing Mekem because we have our very own stars that been born and bred here on the island. We see, we see them sit on your front row. What I want you to do is raise your hand and this is your time to speak. We need to work together as one if you want our culture to be alive. Um, for the young people here, you got to trust in your ability because um, our ancestors will survive thousands and thousands of years. All right, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the world premiere of Island Styles with a track called Time Wait For No One. Proud moment last night. I have to stop there first. We feel that Desert P are really striking the mark because they're using a medium as a form of unification and a form of uh, reconnecting back with the more traditional ways of living. Um, what I was really glad about during that whole week was he was interacting with a lot of those other participants that I wasn't aware who they were, but when I saw them, I noticed they were from different islands in the region. And then watching that, um, that presentation last night, how they gelled and united, seeing that gives me hope for unity across the region into the future. Yeah, this morning I felt, oh, I felt, I don't know, I felt good. Yeah, Natalie said that Darren was sitting over there and showed me. I went over and I introduced myself. He works at Wakai Wayan. He's a psychologist. They've been planning to work with young fathers who would be in like the similar situation. They said they had a look at the film and, and he thought I'd be the perfect fit. I'm finally taking steps forward with the mental health work. 
Mm -hmm. Go with the flow now, I guess. Yeah. Thanks, Desert Pete. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard DPM Airlines. <laughs> Direct from Cairns, Queensland to Mumbrook Country on Palm Island. I don't know that we're coming back until like the night before. We gathered together and then we yarn about it. And we want to add a little say. Having like all the kids in the community come together and being able to share that with everyone else. We need people to know what the Bulgaman people feel because it's just been really painful. A lot of suicides happening with the people in this country, even here, on Palm. He takes notice of everything, that boy. It's just bad, we need to stop people killing each other. And it's their fault, they want us to drink. It's their responsibility. It's really huge for us to tell stories, you know? And so you can get it out there too. Well, I noticed that Nasha, he's been going to sleep early because he's been very excited to get up and film. When we shot the video, it was unbelievable. Filming with you guys has, it's been really good with him. And it feels normal, and that's not okay. It's amazing how you bring all of that out, and Nase was able to speak about it. And now it, it can like change Palm when, once they get that message from the video. Like this gave me hope, like to like try and make a change or something. We welcome me. Uh, Desert P Media, on behalf of uh, Mambara and the Bulgaman people. Uh, I think we're still here dealing with all this trauma because people were just taken from their lands. And in 1914, they had it written on paper that Palm Island will be the place to send Aboriginal people. There's never been any like formal counselling sessions prior to uh, 2004. If there's anything going on, it's okay for you to put your hand up and say, I need someone to talk to. That's what Desert Bee Media is. You've done the best here so far, you know. All the others came in, just rushed in, took bits and pieces out of our mouth and didn't return. So last night we put on a show for the community and played um, the music video and two short films that we made. The biggest highlight for me last night was seeing Nashe's film and seeing all his friends and family getting so excited to see him on the big screen. So we're on the barge, heading out of Palm Island, back to the mainland. Next stop is Bowen, Queensland. My awareness of mental health is that it was um, still a embarrassing shame factor thing that nobody talked about. We are still having a battle to this day about getting people to talk about their mental health or to go get some support. From the first day, it was straight into the, to the project and the discussion about mental health. Because we talk a lot about how this stuff happens a lot in Aboriginal communities, eh? loss and grief and trauma and all that stuff, more than in other, other communities. Would you say that? Why do you think that is? Depression and anxiety, that really hit home for me because like I was struggling myself. I realised that there was not only just me struggling with it, like there were other people out there as well. It was very encouraging because it brought mental health uh, awareness out of the darkness and into the open so that those kids aren't embarrassed to talk about it. And the more they share that with their peers, the better, yeah. 
it brought me closer to a few people and that's when I found my new best friend. They have bonded as a group and they support one another because some of those kids were socially isolated and now they're connected. Yeah, they've blossomed since then. So after the project, I could see that in there every day, um, just their demeanor and stuff. At, at school, they would carry themselves, you know, like they had done something good. And I still see it in them today. So it's uh, been a bit of a journey to get here. It has been a journey to get here, I can tell you that much. The advice that I could give to our Murray folk is don't be ashamed to talk about it or anything like that. It's always a conversation that we always still have now. If, if we see someone who's down, who feels down, they know how to go through the right channels to get help. Without further ado, the world premiere of Bowen Connection with Deep Sea Dreaming. Desert Peak came in like a whirlwind, you know, there were like little ants all over the place taking over my office and everything, and yeah, getting the kids all revved up and everything. But then when they left, everything was back to normal and real quiet, yeah. So a bit more follow-up would be greatly appreciated. We're all a bit exhausted and really happy and, um, and can't wait for the next journey. Taking in that deep wisdom of our, you know, First Nations people of, you know, let's take it slow, let's reflect and let's talk to one another. The more that we do that and practice that, the more opportunity uh, that we get to own this particular conversation about our social well-being. I'm just very proud of what we've done. I've seen children involved, their confidence grown. It's like they've evolved. Yeah, they feel really proud, like really proud. A different kind of proud feeling, you know. It's really hard to build really genuine relationships with young people and then walk away at the end of the week. We're still developing legacy processes so that we can train people and and all of this requires resources that, that you know, are, are more difficult to come by than project specific resources. A huge thank you to the Primary Health Network for um, innovating and for trying something different and trying something new and to the DPM creative team for your incredible hard work. We're seeing some really beautiful outcomes from this project that's really affirming and, and really inspiring, so thanks again.